Uh, hi, I'm Cheryl Lenz. I'm the owner and distiller of Delaware Phoenix Distillery. And uh, I started this business in 2009. Well, that's when all the permits were finally approved. Walton had been dry from oh, 1845 until about 1965. Within Walton, there was no distilling of beverages. That's what I wanted to do. So I had to get special permission to be able to actually do this here uh, within the village of Walton. Mostly it was, I only had some friends of mine suggest that the absinthe that I'd been making uh, was pretty good and that they thought maybe I should be professional. So that gave me the idea that, wow, really? So I thought about that and I thought, well, maybe that's worth looking into. So initially you have to begin to understand the, what are called the Code of Federal Regulations so that you can find out all the special rules that exist for a distillery. You know, certain types of locks are required on the doors and, um, you know, things like that, security and all sorts of other stuff. So that's kind of the first thing, and also then looking around at the types of what facilities, what buildings in Walton um, that might be available to me would meet those requirements. So but a lot of the buildings in Walton, even if they had a storefront or a uh, place in the beginning uh, at the bottom floor, would be acceptable. Uh, this building was available after the 2006 flood. It had never had dwellings in it. It had always been like offices, you know, old timey, you know, who knows, lawyers' offices or what. So um, it was like, oh, cool. So this could actually meet that type of regulation. And the owner was like, okay, people didn't understand distilling. They didn't know what that was really. So they thought, oh, you're going to make wine. So it's like, okay, I, I told them what I was going to do uh, producing alcohol. It's like, no, you, you don't want to give them too much information. Uh, people didn't know what absinthe was. They had no clue. I told them it was a 19th century spirit that, uh, you know, had been uh, become available again in Europe, you know, back in 2000. And, uh, you know, it was something that I liked. Um, so, yeah, so that was, uh, so I had to go before the uh, zoning board. <coughs> And uh, one of the problems there was that uh, the way it's set up is the, you know, the mayor only has a term for two years. Someone on the zoning board sits for five. So these people actually have a lot of power. The head of it at that time was actually, uh, uh, definitely he was not in favor of the type of business I wanted to do. So he did everything possible to slow my process down make it take longer, cost more money. Uh, so it was a real problem. Uh, thankfully they said yes, which kind of allowed me to go on and, and work with others in, uh, for example, getting my federal permit together, uh, ordering equipment. Because really the problem is you have to build your whole distillery out before anyone says yes, before you have your permits. In theory, that you could spend all this money and people come back and say, oh no, Sorry, disapproved. Uh, not so much of a problem with the feds because they will work with you pretty, pretty readily at the, in the beginning and right from the beginning. Whereas the state of New York is a very opaque system. So I got my federal approval in August of 08 and sent in all the paperwork to the New York State uh, Liquor Authority. And after five months, I hadn't heard a single word. And you know, at first they don't want to actually tell you any information. Well, it'll get served, it'll get reviewed, and the order it's received. Well, that's very nice, except I just spent all this money establishing, you know, my business, because that's the law, and I can't operate. So, well, we'll go see. Oh, no one's looked at it yet. So that was pretty upsetting. So I eventually wrote a Tearfield email to, uh, you know, the governor. Mostly it was just to make myself feel better. You know, 
know, because it seemed like at that point, well, who knows when they're going to get around to it. And I felt that uh, you know, it'd be nice to have a chance to actually run my business rather than just due to bureaucratic inaction have, go out of business because you run out of money. Uh, so anyway, I sent off this email and I ended up uh, maybe a week later or so got a letter from the uh, state liquor authority saying, well, well, they've heard from the governor's office uh, about my application and uh, they never really said they were going to expedite it, what they call expedite it, which means, quote, take it out of turn. Uh, but, you know, they, they said they would look at it. And I'm thinking, well, that's not, still not very encouraging. So I finally contacted my uh, state assemblyman, and they ended up uh, looking into it. And they go, well, they heard from the government. They sent you a letter saying they're expediting it. And I'm saying, no. They sent a letter. It never once says they're going to expedite it. Well, he said that they were. Great. Well, maybe another couple weeks after that, I actually got a call from someone at the liquor authority, the person who was actually going to review the application. So once it got to someone and they decided to look at it, it was really pretty, you know, a couple weeks, some faxing back and forth. So after about seven months, late February uh, of uh, 2009, I got that permit. So that allowed me to legally uh, distill here.